I recently did a review of these Power Queen batteries, and these are the low temp cutoff batteries. And I thought I better talk to you a little bit about what that means to you when you put them in your RV. What does that, what exactly does that mean, low temp cutoff? Now these batteries have been on the market for quite some time, and when they've been torn apart and looked at by folks like Will Prowse and Hobotech, they get good review, they're built really well. But back at that time, they didn't have this low temperature cutoff feature. Well, what I'm gonna do in this video is show you what that means to you as an RV owner. We're gonna test it in actual conditions like you're gonna experience in your RV and see just exactly what happens. Now, why is low temperature cutoff important? Well, you're not supposed to charge a lithium battery or a LifePo 4 battery below freezing. You can use the power from the battery all the way down to uh, minus four Fahrenheit and up to like 140 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 20 Celsius and up to 60 degrees Celsius. You can use the battery. You just can't charge it below freezing. If you charge it below freezing, it'll damage the battery. So batteries that don't have the low temp cutoff and you got them in your RV and you got them set up on a charger to maintain them, uh, if it charges it below freezing, you're gonna damage the battery. So with the low temp cutoff, what it does is it shuts off the ability to be charged. It just turns itself off is what it does. Let's test this out. And to be clear, this isn't just about Power Queen batteries. This applies to any lithium battery that has this low temp cutoff on it. We're gonna start by charging this battery up to the fullest, and then as a bonus, we're gonna see how many watt hours we get out of the battery. And then we'll take it out in freezing conditions and see how it does. If I take these power leads off the battery and you know shut off the inverter, this is starting at about 13.3, and I'm running a small 500 watt inverter. I've got a kilowatt meter over here, currently showing uh, 0.02 kilowatts and uh, just a, a heat lamp and a little heating plate there and we'll just this will take all day to run this battery down okay well i took this all the way down to uh, zero until the battery just shut off and i got 1200 watt hours out of it which is uh, pretty impressive for a battery that's rated at 1280. the battery did really well since then i've charged it back up a little bit and used it for some other things and now we're going to take it out and do that test to see how the cold temp shutoff works. Just to show you that the battery is taking a charge right now, it's at room temperature, of course. This flashing light here means that it's taking a charge. And you can see it accepting a charge in this window up here. Now when the battery is either fully charged or too cold to charge, this light will stop flashing and this will come over and actually show a full charge. It just means that it's no longer accepting a charge. But let's, let's uh, chill it down now and see what happens. Okay, I just brought the battery out into the trailer here and you can see it's cold. It's just a little over 20 degrees out here. If I put the charger on the battery right now, it will charge because it's still at uh, 70 degrees on the inside. So we're gonna let it cold soak here for a little bit and then try charging it. Well, I brought this Power Queen battery out here about, mm, about four hours ago and it was from inside the house where it was like 70 degrees and it's been a steady 22 degrees out here in the trailer, and the inside of the battery hasn't gone down to 32 degrees yet. I know because I've been measuring the temperature of the battery posts up here uh, to give me some indication of what the inside of the battery, because you know, the heat would uh, transmit up the battery posts, and the battery posts are like, right now, after about four hours, this one is 28 degrees, this one is 32 degrees, so the inside of the battery hasn't gone down to 32 degrees and I just plugged the charger in and it's still accepting a charge. So I'm just gonna have to wait a little longer and wait for this to chill down some more to make it uh, do its auto shut off feature. Okay, down to 20 degrees there and you can see that the battery has finally stopped uh, charging. It uh, stopped accepting a charge. The light's not blinking here. And over here it shows a full charge, but it's not taking a charge. Temperature here at the post is 19 degrees. 19 degrees. Well, that actually took a lot of time. It didn't quite go as I thought it would go because it took so long for the core of the battery to go down to 32 degrees. So this started at like three o'clock yesterday afternoon. 
I put it out here and the temperature was just under 25 degrees, maybe 23 or so. This is Fahrenheit, by the way. And uh, <laughs> by 10 o'clock last night, the core of the battery still hadn't gone down that low. Now, the only way that I could tell was I was measuring the temperature on the battery posts, which protrude down into the battery. And they were staying up, you know, uh, at a higher temperature than the ambient temperature here. But anyways, yeah, it did shut off. So, and won't, and won't accept a charge here. I didn't have the charger plugged in and charging it all that time. I would just come out and hook it up to see if it would take a charge, which is what I had done just now. So now the other part of this test is, how long does it take for it to warm up and start taking a charge? We're gonna do a time lapse on that one. Okay, I just brought it back in the house. Temperatures come up to 40 on the thermometer there. It's 828 in the morning and it's not taking a charge. So we'll just see how long it takes for that battery to uh, warm up to 32 degrees on the inside and start charging again. So you see it took almost two hours for the internal temperature of this battery to rise up to 32 degrees just at room temperature so it would start charging again. Well, this is all good. It protects itself by not allowing you to charge it below 32 degrees. That's important. So what are your options? I Here in Montana, I prefer to use self-heating batteries myself because we six months out of the year, it's going below freezing here at night where <laughs> it seems like that. And to be able to camp and everything, we need batteries that heat themselves. A self-heating battery, of course, is more expensive. And what it does is when it senses power coming in from your solar panels, it uh, automatically uses some of that power to warm the internals of the battery up to about 40 degrees. So it, it turns off its low temp cutoff and allows the battery to charge. That's one option. The other option is that you put a heating pad underneath this, which they sell, battery heating pads, or you can put a heat lamp on it, but either way, it requires you to be plugged into 110 to do that. And for those of us who spend time camping and boondocking, that's not an option. But for people that live in areas that uh, go down below freezing, down to you know maybe 30 degrees, 20 degrees, 25 degrees, this is a good option for you. But, but keep in mind now, so you're camping in the high desert and it's dropping down to 25 degrees at night and going up to 70 degrees during the day. You got to remember that when it, when it starts warming up in the morning, your battery is going to take quite a while before it, a couple of hours before it starts accepting a charge again. So keep that in mind. And if you happen to be charging this battery at the time when, it, when the temperature starts to drop, just the very act of charging it is going to keep it heated up inside until it's fully charged, as long as the temperatures are only going down to about 20 degrees or so. I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, I think that the low temp cutoff is very important. Uh, it protects your battery from being damaged. That's the main thing. If you got something out of this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.